In the first video of this series, we learned what a linear combination of vectors is. And so just a refresher, a linear combination of n vectors, its general form looks something like this. It's just a sum of scaled vectors. So here's a general linear combination of n vectors. Okay? In this video, we're going to talk about the span of a set of vectors. And all the span is, in simple terms, is it's the collection of all the possible linear combinations you can make. So we'll give it like a nice definition in just a second, but first I want to consider what if we just want to find the span of one vector? What can we do? So let's consider one vector v. Um, say it's equal to uh, 1, 1. Okay, so it's a vector in R2 and it's, and it's 1, 1. So geometrically, we have the vector looking like this, right? We want to consider what are all the possible linear combinations that we can get of just this one vector. And then whatever that ends up being will be the span of the vector v. So the general form of a linear combination of just one vector would just be like this, right? Because we only have one. So um, a linear combination of v can be generalized as some scalar times 1, 1. And so geometrically, what are we doing when we scale by a vector? We want to find all the possible vectors we can get by scaling it by c. So if we scale it by 2, for instance, it turns into this. If we scale it by 3, it turns into this. If we scale it by 1.5, it turns into this. We go the other way, too. So if we scale by negative 1, it turns into this, and negative 2, and so on. So hopefully you're seeing this pattern. All the possible linear combinations of just the vector 1, 1 forms this line here, y equals x, does it not? So then we say the span of, this is how you denote it, 1, 1 um, equals a line. And since this is in the xy plane, we say a line in R2, okay? So how do we find this? We just consider all the possible linear combinations of the vector 1, 1. And it turns out that that's just a line, the line y equals x to be exact. And so we say the span of 1, 1 is a line in R2. And so we can say in parentheses y equals x. Um, so let's write down like a nice definition. So the span, here's my definition. The span of a set of vectors, right? Normally we have two or three or four, more than one vectors. The span of a set of vectors is the collection see if you can like anticipate what i'm going to say is the collection of all possible linear combinations and i'm just going to say of those vectors so it's not very mathematically rigorous but i hope you get the point i i, I want to like say it, you know, like in English, so that it makes as, as much sense as possible. So the span of a set of vectors is the collection of all possible linear combinations you can make using those vectors. So let's consider two vectors. What's the span of two vectors? And uh, there's two cases for this, right? We could have two vectors. They could be collinear or they could be non-collinear. So let's consider the vector 1, 1 again, and then the vector 2, 2. So what's the span of these two vectors? Well, Maybe you can already tell you're still kind of stuck on that line y equals x, right? So let's write the general linear combination. c1 times 1, 1 plus c2 times 2, 2. And remember, the span of these two vectors is all the possible outputs you could get by picking some c1 and c2. And so is it possible that we could get a vector off of this line? Like what if we wanted this vector, 4, 0 or something? Well. Just think about it geometrically. By adding these together, right, if we add this vector, the vector 1, 1 to the vector 2, 2, we get the vector 3, 3, right? And that's still collinear with the other two. It's still stuck on this line. And it doesn't matter if we scale it because that's still going to stay on this line. So the span of these two uh, collinear vectors is still just the line y equals x. And so no matter what we pick for c1 and c2, we'll never be able to get the vector like this one I drew, 4, 0. Right, because that doesn't lie in the span of of one one and two two. Okay, so keep that in mind. So we can say the span. So let's write down the the answer. Span of one one, and then you separate the two vectors in the set that you're taking the span of. 
with a comma. You say the span of 1, 1, and 2, 2 equals, again, a line in R2, right? Um, or you could say, generally, the span of two collinear vectors is a plane. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I just spoiled the, the next answer. Is a line. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, before I move on to two non-collinear vectors, which, yes, spans a plane, spoiler alert, um, I want to talk about a new term. Um, these two vectors are collinear. And so I'm going to define the term linearly dependent. And so what that means is basically if you have a set of vectors where one of them is, I'm going to use the word redundant, um, and hopefully this makes sense in a little bit. If you have a set of vectors where one of them is redundant when you're describing, defining the span of the set of vectors, then the set of vectors you call it linearly dependent. So you can see in this example, uh, we already knew the span of the vector 1, 1 was the line y equals x, right, from up here. And then when we added 2, 2, the vector 2, 2 to the set of vectors, the span was still the same line. So this adding this vector 2, 2 didn't change the span at all. So the vector 2, 2 is redundant when you're trying to define the span of the set of vectors. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So I'm going to say... Um, a set of vectors, I'm going to define the term linearly dependent, a set of vectors that contains at least one redundant vector is called linearly dependent. Okay, so now, so for example, this set of vectors, the set 1, 1, and 2, 2, is a linearly dependent set of vectors. And so when you just have two vectors, it's really easy to, de to determine linearly dependent or linearly independent because you just check and see if they're collinear, right? Since they relied on the same line, the span is just that line. So you check and see is one vector a multiple, a scalar multiple of the other? If that's true, then you say the two vectors are linearly dependent. So now let's consider a case where you have two vectors in R2 that are not collinear, that are not linearly dependent. So you could say they're linearly independent. So let's consider a very simple case, the vector 1, 0, and the vector 0, 1. So that's our set of vectors, 1, 0, 0, 1. And we want to think about what's the span of those two vectors now, since they're not collinear. So we have a general linear combination that looks like this. And all these output vectors that you can get by picking C1 and C2 will form the span of the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. So um, basically, you can pick any numbers to be the entries of this output vector, and you can get um, a linear combination of these to satisfy it. So literally anything. So 7.2, negative 4. Can we pick a C1 and C2 that satisfies this? Yes, we can, right? Because C1 is just 7.2, and C2 is just negative 4. And so I could have picked any numbers in here, which means geometrically you can think about it um, you can think about it geometrically as well. You can just pick any vector here, like this one. And how can you use a linear combination of these to get to that vector? Well, you would first scale this vector 1, 0, all the way out to here, right? So that's picking a C1 that's big enough that you can scale it to here. And then it looks like, in this case, C2 doesn't need any scaling, so you just add it. And how do you add this vector to this vector? Well, you translate it over here, and then you connect the tip to tail, and then you get the vector that we want. And I could have done this with any vector in the xy plane. And so, therefore, the span is the xy plane. So you can say span of 1, 0, 0, 1 equals xy plane. Um, equivalently, since the xy plane makes up all of R2, and we're only considering R2 in this problem, you could say that it also equals um, all of R2. So you could have written as your answer the xy plane, or you could say R2. So in general, the span of two, I could say non-collinear, but now I'm going to use this the new terminology of two linearly independent vectors uh, is a plane. Okay, 
So now let's consider three dimensions. So here's your x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And let's consider similar vectors to this, this uh, example we just did. So the vectors uh, that goes one unit in the x-axis and one unit in the y-axis. So now we have a, a linear, and we want to find what's the span of these two vectors, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. So we write the general linear combination. And we say all the vectors we can get here as, as the output will be the span of the vectors 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. So what are those? Well, it's the same case as above. Um, with these two vectors here, you could get any vector in the plane by taking a linear combination of them. And the same thing holds down here. As long as we're talking about vectors in the xy plane only, we can get that vector by taking a linear combination of 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. Right? You could pick any number here and any number here. And as long as the third component is 0, it's possible to write it as a linear combination of these two vectors. And so you can say the span of 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0 equals um, a plane. But now it's not in R2, it's in R3, right? Because all these output vectors have three components, so they all live in R3. And geometrically, we're looking at 3D space and not just the xy plane. Um, you could also just say xy plane and then uh, assume that in the context of the problem, we're, we're working in three dimensions, OK? So now let's go up to the very top. By the way, are these two vectors here linearly dependent or linearly independent? Leave a comment below, and then uh, <laughs> that way we can we can engage the audiences. OK. Let's go up. I had an example problem here. So we'll close the video with this example problem. This is from actually a midterm, the midterm one from last uh, fall, fall of 2018. So what is the best way to describe the span of the columns of A? So remember, we can think, I mean, we haven't talked about matrices in this video, but remember I, I said in a, in a past video that you can think of a matrix as um, columns that are just vectors. So we can, we can say, here's a, here's a matrix, let's, let's think about the column vectors and treat them as vectors. And we say, well, how can we describe the span of the columns of A? And whenever it says, what's the best way to describe the span, it's just saying, what is the span? Um, so let's see, we have two vectors, and so two vectors, the only um, possibility for the span of two vectors, remember, is either a line or a plane. And it's a line when the two vectors are collinear, or you can say when the two vectors are linearly dependent. Um, and then it's a, the two vectors span a plane when the two vectors are not collinear, when they're linearly independent. And so we just have to, so that's all we have to de decide in this problem is, are the column vectors here linearly dependent or independent? And remember, I said you can check if two vectors are collinear just by seeing if they're scalar multiples of each other. So let's see. Uh, is this first vector, 1, 2, negative 1, a scalar multiple of negative 2, negative 4, 2? To check that, you just go, you check by component. So how can I get to negative 2 from a 1? Well, you have to scale it by negative, negative 2. And if you can scale each of these remaining entries by negative 2 and get the, the entries in the, the other vector, then yes. The second vector is a um, scale, uh, scale, scalar multiple of the first vector. And so we check 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. OK, so these are scalar multiples. In other words, they are linearly dependent. They're collinear. And so something like this in three dimensions, if you have x, y, z, um, it's 1. 2, negative 1, so kind of like this. Here's the first vector. And then the second vector is twice the length in the opposite direction. So their span, all the possible linear combinations, forms this line. And is the line in R2 or R3? The line is in R3. And so you say the answer is a line in R3.